Hello everyone, now we will talk about over dentures. What is over denture? Now we can see the picture something which is there below the denture. So the denture is over something. So that is the reason it is called over denture. Yes, of course, some way literal meaning says that. That something when the denture is over the ridge and the denture, something is there between, then that will be known as over denture. Now, why is this over denture coming into picture? Now, we all know Sir D. Van said that preservation of what remains is most important than meticulous replacement. So, that means preventive prosthodontics emphasizes a much of the favorable role where we have to keep away the natural teeth which is present or we can bound that with the implants. Whatever is there to preserve what the remaining ridge we have to preserve the bundle bone that we have and not let it to resolve more. So for that all the help all the excuses that we will make to preserve and go ahead with preventive prosthodontic will emphasis is one of the uh, technique will be over denture. So that's all about over denture. Now what is the definition according to GPT-8? It says that over denture is defined as a removable partial denture or a complete denture that covers and rests over one or more natural teeth remaining or it can be dental implants as well. A prosthesis that covers and is partially supported by the natural teeth, natural tooth roots which is present that can be vital or non-vital. If it is vital it's also good, non-vital also favorably we have to go with endodontic treatment. And or a dental implants called also overlay denture or it is also called telescopic overlay denture prosthesis, superimposed prosthesis, these are the different synonyms for over denture. Now what are the rationals of over denture? Why are we using over denture? First important thing other one talking of all this thing is the one which I like the most is the proprioception activity of the teeth. That is that the teeth itself has periodontal ligaments. Now the natural teeth can you know transfer its signal for whatever is coming like we are chewing something and we have a small stone in our food so the natural teeth will stop before biting the teeth before biting on the stone so how does that happen that response is called proprioception now that proprioception is not there in the denture when we will put so instead of that when we have a natural teeth downstairs so now that proprioception can also be maintained sensitivity of anterior teeth of course if there is a sensitivity we can you know you go ahead with over denture Dimensional perception, this is important. There are two words. One is dimensional perception and one is directional sensitivity. The fourth one, the directional sensitivity. Now, what is dimensional perception? Dimensional perception is that if we have a bigger food in our mouth, like we have something big to chew, the teeth will also chew for more amount of time till it is grinded into smaller pieces. Now, that is called dimensional stability or perception directional sensitivity is what directional sensitivity is moving the food from one side to another side likewise on right hand side when you are chewing the food is to be moved on the left hand side so it has to change with the direction similarly the left lateral and the right lateral movements when you are doing this kind of activity i'll show you how it is like this when you are doing this kind of activity the direction of the mandible is moving so for that we have to have directional sensitivity and which teeth is more most important to give all those things Jinka, whose roots will be bigger now the root is bigger of which teeth canine parental ligaments will be more in which teeth canine so the proprioception will be more in which teeth of course canine so the canine response is also important in those cases perception of uh, non-vital teeth the studies have found out it is not just the vital teeth which plays proprioception or you know perception giving activity. It is also the non-vital teeth which comes into picture and helps in these activity. Why is the non-vital teeth done because there is no nerve and there is no blood vessels present again? Yes, of course, because we still have the periodontal ligaments intact in those cases. So the signals can be passed through the periodontal ligaments to our brains and the proprioception and activity will be maintained. Perception of the teeth would reduce alveolar support, decrease of perception in older individuals. Yes, of course, over denture is again important because whatever we are doing is to preserve the bone behind, the down bone, that is a bundle bone because that bundle bone starts resolving immediately when the teeth is removed or the extracted. So once you are preserving the teeth, we are preserving the bundle bone over there. So hence we are preserving the ridge and also decreasing 
the rate of resorption. So keeping all this rationally in mind, we need to go ahead with overdentures. Now we come, let's see what are the advantages of overdenture. And the advantages of overdentures are that equally effective and superior method of treatment. Now it is also giving the proprioceptive response as I told you. It is easy to maintain and clean those dentures because now down we have a natural teeth. So it's easy to remove that and clean it and again put it back in the position with a single path of insertion. We do have stability retention is much higher than the normal complete denture which is not supported by any natural teeth or implants. The open palate is possible. The most important thing, the patient who has gag responses, those patients cannot accept a palate filled or a full palate coverage. So for those patients, if we have some natural teeth and give a support of the natural teeth as an overdenture, those patients will be very happy because there is no palate, no coverage of the palate to give away the gag responses. It is excellently patient acceptance is there because complete denture, as we know, it is removable at the end of the day. Overdenture is somewhat fixed to the, to the particular patient. So the patient also feels a happy feeling of it getting fixed. Rather, it is more stable than a normal complete denture. Aesthetics is excellent we can achieve because we now know where exactly the natural teeth were there. So we can give the natural appearance to the particular denture. It is also easy to make the measurements because inter arch distance is maintained because of the natural stops the natural teeth which will act as a vertical stop present over there the posterior teeth that can act as a vertical stop because then now we need not go ahead and find out what was the vertical dimension at occlusion what was the vertical dimension at rest we now have the natural teeth to give it support also there is less trauma to the supporting tissues which is present now possibility to using an attachment or a soft liner also increases we can give soft liners or tissue conditioners in these cases so that that will not harm the below tissues. Also, distribution of the force of the mastication is just not onto the ridge because our ridge is not that efficient to take all the masticatory forces. Now we have natural teeth. The force will be distributed between the natural teeth and that of the ridge. And also, there will be very less, a fewer post insertion problems that can be seen in particular overdenture patients. Coming to the what are the disadvantages of overdenture. Now the overdenture treatment is of course more expensive than a conventional complete denture treatment due to what first we have to go ahead with an endodontic therapy to the particular teeth. Then what is required you have to give a restoration that is a fixed partial cap, a crown to those particular teeth. Now after the crown that can be of which alloy it can be of nickel chromium, it can be of cobalt chromium, it can be of gold. Frequently teeth are retained also for periodontal therapy. It's required at times. At times any surgical therapies are also required if the bone in that particular is high up, you have to go for osteoplasty. The overdenture is bulkier or fixed or removal partial denture. Of course we have a detachment, we have a metal framework, we have something to fix on a metal coping. Mainly patients do not like any removable appliance and therefore may prefer a fixed partial denture. So in those cases also overdenture plays a very disadvantageous role. The another problem with the patient is if the patient is not keeping the oral hygiene proper. So what will happen? The retained roots which are present or the teeth which is present below the crown that we have given will start getting caries. And when there will be more caries, there will be involvement of periodontal diseases. Once the periodontal disease is there, caries is there, the end result is we are loss of the teeth. So once the teeth is lost, all the overdenture concept is zero. Now you have only left with the ridge again. Now there are also problems of maintenance. What all things you have to maintain? You have to maintain the coping that may become loose, attachment may wear off, loss and breakage can be there, alveolar ridge resorptions can be there, overdenture breakage can be there and most important thing is the oral hygiene problem if the patient is not aware and doesn't keep all the problems into consideration. So oral hygiene is not maintained, the overdenture is failed of course. Coming to the indications. What are the indications of overdenture? Where all and which all patients can you give overdenture? So you can give it in the younger the patient, greater the indication. In situations where retention is difficult to obtain, for example, xerostomia patient or absence of an alveolar residual ridge, a flat ridge altogether, loss of maxilla or partial loss of mandible in cases post-cancer, post-chemotherapy when the mandible is dissected, resected out, 
or congenital deformities like cleft palates. For a patient with poor prognosis for complete denture, like high palatal vault and a rich slope. Now, if there is a high palatal vault, what will happen? The palate that will be covered with acrylic denture will be again high. So rather, we will not give we will give a palate free denture in those cases. Poorly defined sublingual fold space. The entire retention concept in mandibular denture is from the sublingual fold space and alveolingual sulcus. Now in these patients who do not have sublingual fold space, that is a crescent area or the alveolingual sulcus, those patients are also into trouble. So for them we can again go for over denture and that's another best way to give more retention. Knife edge ridge in the patients, those patients who have knife edge ridge also we cannot give poor retention is possible. Similarly, if the tongue is more bigger in the particular patient, like class 3 kind of tongue, in those patients also we cannot go ahead with giving a normal denture. Over denture is another good option for those kind of patients as well. When pronounced vertical overlap is required, produces this desired aesthetic result or a unilateral over denture is at times. Do you think that unilateral over denture should be given? Yes, of course. Whatever is preserving should be preserved. So unilateral overdenture is also good. Also good for function aesthetics when a large amount of bone and soft tissue has been lost from one side of the arch. Patient with badly worn over teeth, when the teeth is badly worn out in those patients also you can give away the overdenture. When complete denture will be opposed by retained mandible anterior teeth preventing combination syndrome. In those patients where the mandible has an anterior natural teeth what will happen? It will go on hitting the particular upper denture area. So in those cases, so that the denture doesn't come from maxillary down from posterior region, if we already have over denture, it will make it fix over them. So now it will give a more effect on the distribution of the force, not only to the ridge, but also to the natural teeth. So hence, a body will not obtain a defensive mechanism to produce a flabby ridge. All this are interconnected, so hence, in those cases also, we can go ahead with the over denture. Now coming to contraindications, we need to know where all we need to stop as a doctor. We cannot do it in uncooperative patients or under motivated patients. The patients will be like, give me a normal complete denture, why do I require over denture, giving an extra cost, whereas both are removable. So in those patients, you cannot help it. Psychologically, some patient cannot accept a removal processes. For those, they cannot accept at all anything other than fixed processes. So there is no option of giving any over denture or single complete denture, whatever it is, but there is no option because it is removable at the end of the day. Mentally and physically compromised patients, we cannot help up those patients. When patient cannot economically afford these kind of dentures, because what happens is more expensive than a normal denture. So economic condition of the patient is also very important to take care of. Now contraindications for periodontally involved teeth, like what happens if there is a class 3 mobility in the teeth, you cannot save it with endodontic treatment and reduce the mobility. Mobility, yes of course it reduces, but it reduces from class 2 to class 1, not from class 3 to class 2 or 1. Uncorrected soft tissue and osseous defect, those defects like Andrews class 2 or class 3 defects, which cannot be supported with any bone grafts. The patient is not ready for another surgery. In those cases also, we cannot go ahead with fabrication of an overdenture. Failure to establish a sufficient zone to attach gingiva. If there is, no, there is no sufficient zone of attached gingiva down, then there is no attachment of parental ligaments to the teeth. So our proprioception is again compromised. So there is no use of going in with overdentures. Contraindications for endodontically involved teeth will be what all? Now, if there is a vertical fracture in the teeth, again, it is contraindicated for endodontic treatment as well. Removal is all the extraction is the only option. We know mechanical perforation of the root or we have a broken instrument or a phyllus which is broken. Those teeth are not perception of going longer time. The prognosis of those teeth are not that great. So we cannot plan it for over denture. A horizontal fracture or root below any bony crest even that is not possible because if there is a horizontal fracture below the bony crest, what will happen? There will be loss of that particular bone in that region. The teeth will be lost. The bone will start resolving. Hence, overdenture will fail in the future. So, these are the contraindications for an overdenture. So, now we have the types of overdentures. 
Like what are the different types of overdentures that can be there? So overdenture for congenital and acquired defects. What are the congenital and acquired defects that may require overdenture? When we have no palate, cleft palates, we have microdontia, the teeth are small, oligodontia, very less kind of teeth is present like in cases of amylogenesis imperfecta. Cleidocranial dystosis, again those cases where the abnormality of the teeth is present altogether. Class 3 patient with prognathic mandible. What happens in these kind of patients that we cannot give with a normal complete denture because balanced dentures are contraindicated with class 3 kind of patient. Over denture is another good option in those cases. What is a transitional denture? Now transitional over denture, as the name is saying, transitional. Something is transiting from where? From the patient having his or her natural teeth to the no natural teeth appearance. That transition, when we are giving an overdenture, that will be called as transitional overdenture. The name itself is very clear about it. So what happens? What all things we can use? We can use the natural teeth which is extracted. We can use some raisin teeth as well. Now that depends on the patient. At times patients say, now I want those my natural teeth only. So careful removal of the natural teeth is required. And then, now this transitional denture either can be prepared beforehand or it has to be prepared just on the day of the extraction. Now this transitional dentures, what are the advantages? Now it is very less expensive. It is a smooth transition can take place, whereas it has got very minimal interference with the function and appearance. Now, but what are will be the disadvantages of these kind of uh, dentures? Now transitional denture, what happens in that? The border extension, the aesthetics per se, the occlusion, the support, the stability of the removal partial denture often are inadequate, particularly after many years of use, if you are using the transitional denture, it becomes very unsatisfactory for the patient because the bone size is going to change, the shape of the bone is going to change, all every structure of the entire perioral area is going to change. So that denture which was prepared pre-extraction is poorly going to fit the post-extraction period for years together. Weaker over denture, it becomes weaker because loss of the lower structures are taking place. Therefore, the converted process is considered as an interim or a temporary overdenture to be replaced after a suitable transitional period. So we have to always change the transitional denture because the name itself says transitional overdenture. Now conversion using patient teeth, I told you how we are supposed to do it with the patient teeth that the, when the extraction is taking place, use those same teeth for fabrication of interim or a temporary denture. Immediate overdenture. Now again the name. Go according to the name, it is saying that immediate overdenture. Immediately overdenture is placed after the extraction. On the appointment of the day of extraction, when the denture is placed, that will be called as immediate overdenture. Now this immediate overdentures have got many advantages. Like the patient will not have any feeling that he or she has no teeth. When he came or she came inside who had a teeth, when he or she is going outside also to have a teeth. So that feeling, the psychological boosting is always there in those kind of patients. And of course, the mastication in those patients will be maintained. And the patient will not be like, oh, he cannot go and eat food today because he already has a denture or she has a denture to use it with. Also, resorption of the bone is very less in immediate overdentures. What is remote overdenture? Now, as the name suggests by itself, remote overdenture, something which is remote, very far away. So when we are satisfied with all the changes which has happened after or post extraction, the bone is resolved well, the shape of the bone is bad, the ridge is properly contoured now, the mucosa over as is healed off and it has formed a well round mucosa, a nice resilient mucosa is formed, the teeth is into its place, periodontal ligaments are not disturbed, biological width is not disturbed. When we see all these considerations and the periodontic therapy is over, now when the final processes of overdenture we are preparing, because it is remote, it is very far from the appointment of extraction, all this is calculated from the appointment of extraction. So remote, far away from appointment of extraction, when we are preparing an overdenture, that it will be called as remote overdentures. Now in this remote overdenture, those are like the permanent overdentures. Now it can be a metal based. See now this case which I have done will have a coping of metal. You can see. Now these copings of metal is also called the telescopic coping of metal. 
and this kind of denture which has a metal base on down and a over denture is also called overlay denture because it has a metal coping so it is overlaying a denture we have removable partial dentures as well in those over dentures where we are supported by the over dentures removable partial dentures and of course implant over denture which is a newly coming over technique and newly you know formed up now what happens in implant over denture again when we are placing an implant we are somehow resorbing of the bone we are preventing that now preservation of the bone resorption is also taking place and implant will also find its way as a fixed prosthesis so the patient is now happy to have a fixed prosthesis rather than a removable prosthesis this kind of denture is also called hybrid implant over denture now classification of over denture very widely in the book of hartwell he had classified into three types non coping coping and attachment style now what is non coping what is coping and what is attachment non coping it says a teeth a natural teeth when we are not giving any coping is non coping when we are giving a coping of metal then that will be called coping attachment when we are putting some attachment with the natural teeth to be attached to that of the denture that over denture so that will be attachment let's see one by one now these are non coping over dentures where we will prepare the teeth like a dome shaped preparation is important the preparation for over denture is dome shaped why is this dome shape is to be maintained two reasons one is that the parallel wall on the buccal and palatal is to be achieved second is that when you are putting a metal framework over this a metal coping over this we are not we do not want it to get removed so hence we have to have this dome shaped preparation coping over dentures further was classified into different type it can be long it can be medium it can be medium short it can be short now long coping say about 6 to 8 mm cases now these are the long coping type this is also example of coping with attachment you can see an attachment over here male part of attachment the female part of over denture attachment will come in the over denture the female attachment these are long copings you can see how long like a crown these copings are so 9 to 12 mm of coping when it is used is a long copings now these copings can be used where in vital teeth where we are not doing any endodontic therapy we are keeping the teeth vital the periodontal ligaments are very sound the teeth is very sound no mobility so considering the radiograph has no widening of pdl there is a periodontal ligament space so lamina dura is intact in those cases we can go ahead with no vital we can go ahead with a vital teeth vital teeth we can give in a over denture coping to it and that coping will be called as long copings medium height it copings like you can see in this now this medium height coping can be both for vital as well as non vital the decision remains absolutely with the dentist now the decision that you have to take is again with the help of the intraoral examination radiographic examination when you need to find out if that particular teeth is vital that particular is viable to take away the vital forces or you need to go ahead with endodontic treatment and then give a coping to it now this kind of teeth when we will give a medium coping medium coping is around 4 to 6 mm now in case of this medium copings one more thing is important is the inter arch distance the inter arch distance should be at least after coping at least 20 mm with the next opposing occlusion so that has to be again maintained because on the coping a denture will come on that teeth will come so we need to have that 20 22 mm distance so the inter arch distance plays another important role to decide whether we are supposed to go with medium coping medium short copings like this these are medium short coping it is of course for non vital because when you are doing a teeth a tooth preparation for so small see this has to be non vital teeth and beautifully dome shaped all the copings are done where there will be no interference with the path of insertion and removal and these are very short coping so why do we need the short coping rather i would have removed the teeth no preservation is important preventive prosthodontics has to be emphasized on so what we have done is we have kept this teeth done an endodontic treatment to this and put up a small crowns to it somehow some retention will be maintained of course these kind of retentions are like a button system retention 
but of course a uh, over denture is any time better than a normal denture because firstly the force is transferred here as well as onto the ridge both the places the equal force are distributed secondly uh, additional retention feature is there in the mandibular that too where we do not get any retention and third reason was the sublingual crescent space in this particular patient was very small because the frenum attachment in this patient in the lingual frenum was class 3 it was encroaching onto the ridge so I need to go ahead with keeping these two natural teeth and you can see how nicely the bundle bone in this particular area is saved. You can see the bundle bone which is widely in, encroached in this particular teeth which is preserved. See similar difference, there is no bone bundle bone here. So it has come down like the Andrews class 1 defect has happened over here. Over denture with an attachment, I told you in this case what we had done is I have fabricated this metal um attachment onto with the crown with the crown itself this is attached it has a gap between the mucosa and that of the attachment and the, the denture which will come will have the female housing present the nylon female housings which will go and fit into this particular area exactly so so much of retention we have from the crowns from the particular over denture copings there's a, a large over denture copings from the attachment as well so we have n number of retention fee and also there's a medium sized coping over here we can see which is passive coping now these medium sized copings medium short or these short copings are also called passive copings whereas anything which has an attachment or an implant maybe so those will be called as active copings now two preparations that is to be done is nothing but you need to keep little ferrule onto the tooth and just go ahead with the endodontic treatment and with the endodontic treatment you need to prepare a dome shaped a dome shaped nicely crown over it and give a crown to it now attachments which were there which can be classified according to shape design primary area to be used are of coronal type and radicular type the name itself is saying coronal something with the crown radicular something with the root now coronal it can be intracoronal or extra coronal that means crown it can be within the crown or it can be outside the crown like precision attachments those extra coronal restoration intracoronal restorations are the restoration which are present within the crown like that of the metal housing which will go within the crown like in pyre apartment cases radicular crown radicular what happens in that something which is with the root root like telescopic stud attachment we have pressure buttons with the root what we do in the root we keep little part of the post kind of thing and then prepare a dome shaped coping over it so that is telescopic stud attachment we have bar attachment now bar attachments can be of two types it can be u bar attachment or it can be that is joints or units that is i will tell you how it is u and what is it now before all going through all this now let's see the different attachments and accessory that is screw units are there poles are there balls are there interlocks are there pins are there rests are there these are the different inter accessories now see there's a stud attachment pressure button attachment you can see how a stud is attached to the crown and little part of that is going into the root now this is a classified under radicular type of attachment Stud attachments, example like Dolna attachment, Dolna Bona, we have Gerber attachment, we have Acro Fix, we have Sconger Sika attachment, which is again used nicely. Intrafix, now we'll see Gerber attachment. Now, see Gerber attachment, any attachments can be further classified into two types. It can be the resilient attachment or it can be non resilient attachment. Resilient attachments are those attachments which has resiliency. Malla, that means that it has some amount of movement that it can give to the denture. So that kind of movement is given with the help of what? With the help of springs that is present inside these particular attachment. So wherever there will be presence of spring, those will be called resilient attachment and those will help in little movement. It will give little free movement to the denture. And those which do not have spring will be non-resilient. Those are the strict denture, very strict in its place. No movement is allowed in those space, in those attachments. We have this is a Dada Bona attachments. Now you can see it can be cylindrical in shape, it can be spherical in shape. We have heel over denture implants. This is implant over denture attachments. You can see with the implant, these over dentures are there. 
Now we will have a plastic housing onto this, a nylon coping housing onto these, which will be into the denture. We have Rotherman attachment. Rotherman is an excellent stud attachment example. What happens in this? We have this kind of beam. Now this beam will go into the denture and Rotherman attachment is almost a non-resilient kind of attachment. Now this Rotherman attachment, this will go into the denture and this will get fixed with the, the hybrid attachment that is the teeth present. Now there's a bar attachment. Now bar attachments can be also of different types. Like see, this is my case of header bar attachment. This is called header bar. What is header bar? Header bar where we have a bar and see we can give a little cantilevering also. A little cantilever of the bar is allowed. How much is that? 10 mm is allowed. 10 to 12 mm for mandibular posteriors. For maxillary, 15 mm is allowed. So now these kind of little cantilever bar attachment onto this the denture will come. So the support of the denture is all together on this particular bar. What happens here we have, we can put a nylon housing again. Here, here and here. The denture which will come, those will have those housing. So like this, the housing is there. Now this is that bar which is present. So now this bar, the housing will go and sit into the bar. And there will be one part of insertion. The disadvantages with this is when this particular is going and sitting, it can have this movement. Now this movement is hazardous for us because what is happening with this movement also the overdenture is also moving. So mastication with movement is happening so that can be a little hazardous to us. So what is re recommended is as less as these number one, number two as near as the abutments as good. Number three if it is a v-shaped ridge contraindicated only a straight bar is allowed not a v-bar like this that is again not allowed. So these are things to be kept in mind. Types of bar attachment can be bar units or bar joint. Now the difference between bar unit and bar joint is the same difference that is between a resilient and a non-resilient. In a bar unit you can see there is no spring in between. Whereas a bar joint has little spring. So this will allow little movement of the denture anteroposteriorly and mesodistally and this is good actually. Whereas a bar unit it is a one only one path of insertion and it goes and fixed directly. Now what happens bad with this kind of thing is the removal gets little difficult. Here a little movement is allowed. Little 0.5 mm movement is allowed and that is better for any kind because at the end of the day our mucosa also has a real F effect. That is by Hanam. What it says is resiliency and like effect. So when our mucosa is little resilient, our denture has to be little adjustable, little resilient. So the bar joint gives that kind of attachment to it. Thank you.